Hey guys, Buckskin Dave here. Well, normally I really enjoy shooting this, but that wasn't a shot that I enjoyed that much. And the reason being is I just unloaded my muzzleloader because the muzzleloader elk season ended yesterday. And uh, that's the shot I loaded at the start of the season. And that's the shot I took out at the end of the season. We, uh, we, uh, we're gonna, it's gonna be hard, uh, gonna be hard finishing out winter without a meat supply, but <clears throat> we still have, uh, a lion tag. I've never eaten lion meat, but I'm told it's great. And, uh, spring bears around the corner, and you can make some pretty good sausage out of bear. So, anyway, <clears throat> I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna do a little bit of, work on that action so why don't you come on in I'll show you where I've gotten with it we're still waiting for parts but uh, there was still a few things I got done come on in the shop for a second okay so like I say I'm waiting for parts um, this is a uh, an Italian action so the the threads for the barrel are metric it was 29 millimeter by the pitch was 2.5 I believe <clears throat> Anyway, uh, so what I had to do is, this is a gearhead lathe, so I had to change some gears here. And then I have a chart that converts these threads per inch to metric. So I got all that squared away yesterday, and uh, I've only ever done it once. You know, what's kind of funny is, I did a couple of uh, 1800s-ish rolling block actions that were... I think one was from De Denmark, maybe, and I don't know where the other one was from, but they were, they were some of the ones that were made in Europe. <clears throat> and I do not recall the size of the diameter of the barrel stub is different. I can't remember which one was bigger or smaller, but the size was bigger. But I did not have to cut the threads metric, which is kind of weird. Maybe in the 1800s, um, they didn't have the English system. Uh, of measurement. But anyway, so I got that set and one of the things I like to do when I'm trying to, instead of starting to just cut on the barrel and find out everything screwed up, I use a piece of aluminum. Uh, what I did here is just got a chunk of aluminum, just a scrap piece, <clears throat> and I stuck it in there. And uh, so 29 millimeter I converted the 29 millimeter to um, metric, I mean to English, and it came out like 1.142 inches. So I went ahead and turned that out to, to that size, and I got my, set my threads, and I cut the threads, and the thing wouldn't screw on. I was like, what the hell? And uh, what I had to do was the one that I had for the rolling blocks was about 64 thousandths in width. <clears throat> and the threads on this, I had to make another one that was more like about 79 thousandths or 80 thousandths. So that uh, these threads would go in between the threads on here. And so I got that all made. <clears throat> And so now the action screws right on there. No worries. And it'll come to a stop. And uh, it's 750 thousandths from the shoulder. That'd be probably what you would call the headspace on this flat thing. From the shoulder of the barrel all the way over to where the block goes up against it, 750 thousandths. So. It's going to be pretty easy to do now. When I get the barrel, I have everything set. That's all I got to do is take my time and cut it, and uh, it'll come out okay. So that is one of the things I'm working on. Um, I'm going to, well, I'm starting to collect all the parts. Um, I've got some parts coming. I've got some parts I'm going to just make. Um, there's like a couple of... There's a block that holds the spring on uh, for the, uh, I think I told you about it, for the lever and such. I just make some of that stuff. And uh, we'll go from there. So while I'm waiting for parts, I've been doing a little bit of trapping. Um, 
Can you believe that weather out there? I, uh, it's cold, so the ground's frozen. I went back to some of the old sets that I had made before that snow dumped on us and I yanked them out. And uh, the frost-free dirt and uh, calcium chloride I put in there, I mean, it's all frozen all around, but I just scooped that dirt out of the hole and remade my set. So I, uh, I used a muskrat for bait on two of them up there. One of them has had coyotes visit, well, from the scat that's around, probably three or four times or the same one times or three or four different coyotes, I don't know, had visited that one set. So I got high hopes for that. I'm going to go check it this morning. And I got some more rat traps out. As I set more of these traps, I'm going to need more rats for bait. So I'm going to go check those this morning too. So anyway, get you a cup of coffee and I'll uh, load you up and we'll go check a few traps and uh, see where Yeah, so anyway, I just checked a couple of traps. Uh, nothing to see there. The, uh, this is the country I'm trapping in. And you can see there's no snow, but the ground's frozen solid, so you got to find places where, I mean, it's 34 degrees right now, but you still got to find places that <laughs> Teaspoon's running in front of the truck and on the dirt she's kicking up dust, but she's froze up, so you got to find places where you can, oh, sorry about that, just a little bit of bumpy there. Yeah, anyway, hard to uh, hold the camera and do this, so let's go look at some rat traps. So I got a trap over there on that side of the culvert, and I just walked over there, and it's it's still sitting there. Um, I had one straight here also, and my wire is down, and the trap is gone, so let's pull her up and see what we got. So anyway, I'm trying to do this the best I can. Uh, hold on the camera. Let's see what we got here. That was kind of a waste of time, wasn't it? Sometimes there's just nothing to see when you go out on the trap line. Um, that one, I did get one, that one rat, but when I pulled it out of that seaweed, it really wasn't, it really wasn't camera material, something that got into it and ate half of it, so, still works for bait, but, <clears throat> anyway, uh, we'll go out again on the line and maybe some more things will happen that'll be more fun to look at. Anyway, I'm gonna, I've been, ma I, I made those bullets, and now I got to, uh, size them size and lube them so I'm gonna finish that up today I got I talked to the fella that made my barrel it got put on the it got put on the truck so it's on its way and it's just coming from over the hill from here so it should be here pretty quick I got some other parts coming from New York City and uh, well actually upstate New York probably and then I've got some other other stuff coming. So anyway, um, I wanted to tell you too. Um, I went through all your comments. I really appreciate everybody throwing their their bid in the hat on which way I should go with this rifle. And uh, I'm probably going to take a little bit of everybody's advice. <clears throat> but the two that stood out was uh, you ought to make a, make the rifle like you would have it ordered if you were ordering somebody to make it for you and that's how you should should make the rifle and I thought that was pretty good so we're going to call it the buckskin Dave rifle and uh, I'm thinking of working the wood the stock it's not going to have a crescent buck stop because we don't want to get jammed with that it's going to have not going to have a shotgun butt stock because that's kind of just ugly so we're going to go with the in between like something that's similar to the number three sporting rifle where it's kind of a flat and squared off type butt stock but it's a little purtier than a than a uh, shotgun type um the fore end is gonna probably i don't know haven't figured that out yet but i don't believe i'm gonna have a cleaning rod on it i'm gonna try to make this thing light because the barrel is gonna be a little bit stout on it and 
I don't want to jam it up with so much stuff that it's too heavy for this old boy to pack around just a little ways here and there. So anyway, thank you guys all for your comments. I, I read every one of them. I appreciated every one of them. And uh, I, I thank you. I appreciate it. Anyway, it's all I got this time. I'm Buckskin Dave. Stick with the channel. We're going to build this thing. It's going to be cool. And, uh, and shoot it. That's the fun part. So uh, stick with me. Until then, stay ahead of the zombie virus. Stay safe. And uh, you guys all have a great day. Bye.